Nicola, Lena, Hans Axel, Wolfgang, and Cecilia. And I am Kat Peterson, and today I am here to talk to you about my major and my future career. To start off with, I'd like to talk to you about statistics of adolescents and child psychiatrists. According to the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, only about 20% of children and adolescents with mental illnesses receive some kind of mental health services, and only a small fraction of them receive an evaluation and treatment by a child and adolescent psychiatrist. This shows how many adolescents and child psychiatrists are needed in this world because there are so few. In my speech, I'm going to cover how I apply my strengths, my personality style, my multiple intelligences to my major and to my future career. I will also be talking about the educational requirements in becoming a child and adolescent psychiatrist. I will be talking about the job outlooks and the opportunities. And to finish off, I'm going to be talking about my plan of action based on all the research that I've done. In the beginning of our speech class, we started by making a PowerPoint called Getting to Know You. In this PowerPoint, we covered many different things like our learning styles, our personality types, our multiple intelligences. And some of these I've got here on the slide. My strengths um, are that I'm independent, I'm organized and that I'm precise. My personality style is ENFJ, which means that I'm a very social person who likes to help other people. The multiple intelligences show seven different kinds, visual, interpersonal, verbal, kinesthetic, interpersonal, logical, musical, and naturalistic. My strongest one is interpersonal, which means I'm a very independent person, although I like, still like to help other people. Moving on to educational requirements. There is a statistic, according to Jerry Fox, who is an MD for the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. She states, there is a tremendous need for acad academic psychiatrists, both clinical educators and researchers. The search for new knowledge and treatments for children and adolescent mental illnesses is crucial. This shows that we don't only need um, child and adolescent psychiatrists, we also need people who will teach and bring new people into the career. I will start with my bachelor's degree in psychology, where I will then move on to four years of medical school. After, I will do my residency in general psychiatry, and in the end, I will have a specialised fellowship in child and adolescent psychiatry. <laughs> For my next subject, which is the outlooks and opportunities of being a child and adolescent psychiatrist, says, according to the US Bureau of Health Professions from 2000, it was projected a need in the year 2020 for 12,624 child and adolescent psychiatrists, but a supply of only 8,312. It shows that there is a great demand for people like me who want to become a child and adolescent psychiatrist. It shows because there is such a great demand that you can have flexibility, you can decide how many hours you want to work. You have multiple possible activities that you get to choose from on how you want to treat the children. It also states that the salary is extremely high. For a median starting income, it's $141,600 which compared to an adult psychiatrist, which is only 109,000 median for an uh, exciting income is a lot more, just for two extra years. When you're more experienced, you can start off 155,000. And if you have extra cap training, which was the child and adolescent psychiatry training, you can get even more than that. My plan of action. The average medical education debt in 2012 was 155978 for public school graduates and $183,066 for private school graduates, according to the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatrists. This is an extremely big number, um, and it does cost 
somewhere between 140,000 to 190,000 for an education in child and adolescent psychiatry. As we can see, it kind of depends on where you want to study, where the highest is in New York Medical School. But the median is around 140,000. Some of the interesting courses that I'm going to be taking while doing this, while going down this route, is I'm going to be learning about schizophrenia and affective disorders and participating in clinical research under the help of professors who will teach me exactly what steps to follow. In conclusion, I have told you about how I will apply my strengths, my personality style and my multiple intelligences to my major and my future career. I have told you the educational requirements that I needed to become a child and adolescent psychiatrist. I have also told you the job outlook and opportunities about how in great of a demand the child and adolescent psychiatrists are and that they're desperately needed. And I have also told you my plan of action based upon my research. To finish off, I'd like to talk to you about another statistic from the 2012 Ch Children's Hospital Association survey. It stated that appointments for child and adolescent psychiatry care far exceeds the prevailing benchmark of a two-week wait time in children's hospitals. The average wait time is 7.5 weeks. It doesn't seem fair that just because it's a child and it's our fault that no one is willing to take those extra two years to become a child of an adolescent psychiatrist instead of just an adult psychiatrist that the children have to suffer. And that is what I want to change. Thank you for your time. So hi. Hi. And I'm still here. <laughs>